Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> it's still morning here. At the time I pressed record, it's 11.18 a.m. Excuse me. Congestive heart failure. That's what's going to do your servant in. It's an interesting rabbit here, and you need to know this. Uh, I get back from Shalbina here to Illinois, and I get sick, and I've now got this cough. And even uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley is like, oh, Brad, that sounds like congestive. It is. It is. So uh, please keep your servant in prayer. <laughs> but hey, hey. You know, where I'm bound to go on to, I can't wait. But that is not today. So, good morning again. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the authorized version, commonly referred to as the King James Version. You need what God actually said. Okay, an NIV, a New American Standard, the um, uh, NLT, the ESV, I don't know if I already said that, the non-King James. The non-King James has all the verses, but they, they mess with that horrifically. Okay, the LSD version that John MacArthur wrote, okay? Those are not the word of God. That is not what God said. That's what man said. And those that I just mentioned all have their root from Rome. Okay? From Rome. And, yeah, you can't trust Rome at all. Okay? But, like I said, <clears throat> please get your authorized version of the Scriptures. And read along with me at the verses of Scripture we are going to be looking at and considering today. It's very important. You need to be a Berean. You need to search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. You also need to read along and follow me along because, number one, I make mistakes. I'm fallible. Okay? I make mistakes. You need to see and hear for yourself what we're looking at. Okay? So please, get an authorized version and read along with me. Okay? All right. Second John. Verses 9 on to 11. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, now let's look at this very carefully, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, very important here, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any on to you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Now look at verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. You know what happens with this? People will come to this, and right away, the lack of not rightly dividing the word of truth becomes evident when a Christian comes to this verse, and they, and they read this, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. The doctrine of Christ. And you know what Christians will do? And uh, almost without fail, they will always point to what? The Sermon on the Mount. And they will take this verse and try to apply it to take what Jesus spake before the death, burial, and resurrection and try to make it doctrine for us today. Okay? Now, instruction in righteousness, absolutely. But doctrine. This is what Christianity does. This is what uh, the, those, the daughter of the whore will do. They will come to this verse and they see the doctrine of Christ and without fail, almost every time, almost, almost every time, they will go to the Sermon of, on the Mount, which a video to the scrap talking about that will be in the description box, but they always, they not always, but most of the time they will go to the Sermon on the Mount 
and try to take that and make it salvific doctrine for us today. Okay? Here's the problem with that. Sermon on the Mount, faith is mentioned one time, and it's in the form of a rebuke. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding. Doctrinally, it was still the Old Testament. The New Testament begins, you read this in Hebrews 9, with the death of the testator. Okay? That's when the New Testament began. And there is a huge difference between covenant and testament. Link for that will be in the description box. Okay? You're going to have to... You're going to have to get your feet a little wet and look at some of this stuff on your own time, okay? All right, but the New Testament, this dispensation began with the death of the testator, okay? All right, so what does that mean? Before the death, burial, and resurrection and the bloodshed on the cross, doctrinally it was still the Old Testament. The law was still binding because obviously the perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made. <clears throat> And, while our Lord was here at the first, he was sent unto none but who? The lost sheep of Israel. Okay? He was sent unto the Hebraic Jews. Okay? Not to the Gentiles. Our Lord Jesus Christ was offering unto the Hebraic Jews the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. We talk about this in several videos the foundations videos will be in the description box, as as well as the um, rightly dividing the uh, rightly dividing videos. Okay, where we talk about this. Okay, in depth. But before the death, burial, and resurrection, the Lord Jesus Christ was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jews as Him, as King. Okay, Son of David is a reference unto His kingship. Kin kingship, that Jesus Christ is King of kings, Lord of lords, the Son of David, okay? Son of God, God was manifest in the flesh. Son of man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? That's what that means, all right? And while our Lord was preaching the kingdom of heaven, what was their faith supposed to be in? Christians will tell you the death, burial, and resurrection. No, no. They were not aware of the death, burial, and resurrection until it actually happened. Or else you have a major contradiction with Ephesians 3 and with what Paul spake. And see, that's another thing. Atheists, a lot of you Christians will even point out that what Paul preached and what Jesus preached seemed to contradict, right? Why is that? Because the dispensation changed. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. The faith before the death, burial, and resurrection, when our Lord Jesus Christ was walking around on the earth at the first time, what was their faith in? It was not in the death, burial, and resurrection. They were unaware of it until it actually happened. Okay, or else you have a contradiction with Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7, and several other places such as in Colossians chapter 1 and stuff like that. Okay? And also, why did Peter say what he said? Okay, why? They weren't looking forward to the cross. Okay, they were not aware of the cross until it actually happened. The Lord made reference unto it. Yes, he did. But they didn't get it. Okay, so what was their faith in? That Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That God the Father, the Mashiach was on earth, and they, that was their king. Okay, their faith before the death, burial, and resurrection was to be in him as king, not in the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, all right, you have to be aware of that because the Christian will come to verse 9 here and say doctrine of Christ and try to take things that pertained unto the Hebraic Jewish people for in the context of the kingdom of heaven and they try to take that. Sermon on the Mount, and try to make that salvific doctrine for today. Atheists, Muslims, and even Christians point out what Paul preached and what Jesus preached seem to contradict. They do not contradict. Why? Because they were given on to do in two different dispensations. The law was still binding. Their faith was to be in him as king. 
after the death, burial, and resurrection? It is finished. Our faith is on Christ that he paid the penalty for our sins by the cross. The death, burial, and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross. Okay? Our faith is in him. Okay? All right? Because it is finished. The most significant thing in the history of the world, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Death, burial, and resurrection, blood shed on the cross. That changed everything. It's A.D. It's 2024 A.D. after death. Not after, what is it they call it? Um, 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 common Era CE or before Common Era. You know, they try to be away with Christ and whatnot. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's after death. Everything circulated around the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? So, and hey, the videos proving this will be in the description box for you. Okay, you just watch this and not labor and look for yourself. Shut up, the Lord rebuke you and go away and remember God loves you. Okay? So what is this talking about? What is this talking about? Look at the verse carefully. Okay? Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. The doctrine of Christ is what? That Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay? Some of you might point be, you know, be cute enough and be like, well, what about in 1 Timothy chapter 6, Brad? Let's go there. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 5. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. What's the name of God? Jesus Christ. Whose name? Okay. Whose name? There's only one name given among men under heaven by where we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Okay, not this stupid Yahasha Wuhushi or Kamasaki or Yamaha or whatever you guys want to call it. No, Jesus Christ. One name. Okay? That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Okay? And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren. But rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. The doctrine that is according to godliness. Being separate, other than the world. Okay? Jesus Christ was in the world. He was not of the world. We, saints, we are in the world. We are not of the world. But see, Christianity, like the stupid free gracers, be of the world to win the world, okay? The doctrine according to godliness. Godliness is being separate, other than. Okay, that's what that means. And all things are in Romans chapter 15. All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And also in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, throughly furnished unto all good works. Go across the page, verse 15 in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? The words of Jesus Christ for us today, before the death, burial, and resurrection. There are ones that cross dispensational lines. Yes, they are. But the majority of what Jesus Christ spake 
before the death, burial, and resurrection was in context to the kingdom of heaven that he was offering on to the Hebraic Jews. Okay? All right? The Sermon on the Mount is not doctrine for us today. It will be doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. It is not doctrine for today. That is something that Christianity makes a big blunder at purposely. Trying to bring... Uh, guys, like, you got to forgive in order to be forgiven. No, you don't. That's a work. That will be valid for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? That's a work. Even the stupid free gracers can get that one right. All right? Let's continue. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, let's read verse 3 again on to verse 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Remember, the mind of Christ. Christ had the mind of a servant. He came here to serve. He was separate. Other than that, that's what we are supposed to be as the example that he gave us. Okay? He is proud. Knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, per perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Bam! Bam! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That I couldn't resist that. <laughs> oh, uh, remember the gain there is not just financial it could be fiscal or physical okay fiscal all right it can be friends it could be your own cult following who dress the same act the same have the same mannerisms domo arigato mr robato excuse me okay remember gain is a lot more than what we immediately think of Okay? Okay? So, the doctrine of Christ, the doctrine of Christ is that Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? That's what the doctrine of Christ is. Like I said, atheists, Muslims, and even Christians will point out the glaring, seeming contradictions between what Christ pre uh, preached and what Paul preached. Okay, this is why people who don't rightly divide the word of truth want to call Paul a false prophet. No. What happened? The death, burial, and resurrection. Sh bloodshed on the cross. Death of the testator that brings in the New Testament, which we are in right now, this dispensation, which is by his grace through our faith. Before that, the law was still binding. The Lord Jesus Christ was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? Well, a majority of what Christ preached before the death, burial, and resurrection was not for us today. It's for the kingdom of heaven, which comes after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? See, at the root of this it is not rightly dividing the word of truth. Of course. Of course. And remember, salvation changes within the dispensation. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Excuse me. Salvation changes within the dispensation. God's grace is there in every dispensation, or else we would go up like a puff. The stupid, idiotic, antinomianist, free grace guy tells you that it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. No, it isn't. And they claim to be rightly dividing. All right? No. The doctrine of Christ is that Jesus is God the Father. Now, John 15. <clears throat> this is the necessity of John, 1 John, and 2nd and 3rd John, and stuff like that. John was the one that the Lord used to point, point out who God actually is. See, Rome and their stupid little catechism, Rome's inception, at their inception, they preached one God in three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. We're made in the image of God, okay? One God in three persons, the authorized version does not teach. 
But there is an incident, and we will look at this at the very end of this video. Your Trinity, Catholic. Okay? Look, Trinitarian, you don't have the right God. And if you don't have the right God, how can you have the right gospel? There are Trinitarians out there that get really close to the actual gospel. There are. There are. But see, when they say, well, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, what do you mean by that? Son of God, God manifest in the flesh? Or that he's one of three, give me a break, brother, one of three persons that make one God. That's lunacy, okay? But John 15, John 15, verses 18 on to 27. Now, remember the wholesome words, the doctrine of godliness that Paul, we just looked at? Look at this. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. And Christianity, they are of the world, therefore the world heareth them. They speak of the world, therefore the world heareth them. But, uh, let's, let's, instead of me misquoting that, go to 1 John chapter 5. No, 1 John chapter 4. Excuse me. 1 John chapter 4. Uh, verses 5 and 6. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the lowercase s, spirit of truth, and the lowercase s, spirit of error. Obviously, one that is imparted. Okay, go back to John 15. Verse 18, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. See, the doctrine according to godliness being separate, other than that. Okay? Remember the word that I said unto you. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> My time's coming to an end. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. So, uh, where is that? Uh, 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3. Come on, fingers. 2 Timothy 3, verses 12 and 13. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The doctrine according to godliness being separate other than, like he said in verse 19 in John 15, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And back in, in, in 2 Timothy 3, verse 13. Let's read 12 and 13. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. There are some of these free grace idiots that actually think they are saved. They preach another Jesus and another gospel. And people are sedu seducers. Look here on YouTube, man. Look at some of these, uh, look at some of these um, uh, streaming Christian guys seducing people. Okay? They seduce people. And also remember, remember the word, verse 20 in, for, in John 15. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. 1 John 2. 1 John 2. Verse 19. Verse 18 and 19. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come to be against and to replace. Okay? That's what anti means. Even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know it is the last time. Yeah, look on YouTube. They went out from us, 
but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Go back to John 15, picking up at verse 21. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Trinitarians claim they know God, but they know they don't. God is not three persons that make, that's crazy. God is one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? But what's the problem? If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they, now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Oh, do you see that? But now they have both seen. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The Mashiach, God the Father, walking around on the earth. Okay? Okay, this, this is very simple. When, when you look at it, this is very simple. And remember what that Jesuit Bob guy, and I'm not talking about the idiot from Blackpool, that Jesuit Bob guy said the uh, Trinity language is meant to confound, oh, uh, God is not the author of confusion. Okay, let's continue. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Now let's pay attention. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, capital S, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye shall, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. John 14, John 14, verses 6 unto 20. Jesus saith unto them, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Hmm. Look at that in, uh, look at that, where did we just read in John 15? Uh, where, where was that, uh, uh, verse 24? If I had not done among them the works that which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. Uh, John 14, verse 5, uh, verse, se uh, verse 8, excuse me. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. <laughs> and how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? And what happens? You go to a Trinitarian, a staunch one at that, mostly a Catholic, and you, you know, I <laughs> said to the one guy, you know, you uh, worship the uh, woman's uh, female reproductive thing. Because you look at the symbol of the Trinity. It's the symbol of the matrix. Okay? The eggs and the thing there. Sorry to be graphic. But you look at the little diagram of the Trinity. That's exactly what it is. Okay? There's a video which will be in the description box where we show you that the symbol for the Trinity is actually... Uh, the female matrix. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's disgusting. The Trinity is perverse. Okay, the Trinity. <coughs> there, there's your Trinity. Okay, let's continue now. 
Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh is the body. Okay? We saints today, we have the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Okay? We have the Father dwelling within us. Okay? The example of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And the idea that the Father can be in the believer, but yet in heaven baffles the Trinitarian. And they make they belittle, they make small God by making him into three persons, which he is not. Okay? And what does this mean? The ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, hey, sugar bridges, the three-year ministry was not one of the seven dispensations. Okay? Anyway, the three three years was the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are saints that have been uh, in ministry, ministry of reconciliation, doing whatever, for several years more than the Lord. Okay, that's what that means. Okay, let's continue. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And, of course, the Pentecostals and the name it and claim it people take that and run with it. And it's like, okay, ask God for a Mercedes Benz. Or ask God for money. But see, what's the base there? Covetousness. And the Lord abhors the covetous. Okay? The gifts that our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, gives us is meant to be shared, not hoarded. Christianity is all about hoarding for themselves. Okay? Good video about that. On hoarding. Hoarding. Big part. Okay, let's continue. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall, shall be in you, because the Holy Ghost hadn't been given yet, because the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. They were still doctrinally under the law. Okay? Shall be in you, not given yet. I will not leave you comfortless. I, I will come to you. I. Mm. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. At that day, what day? When the Holy Ghost was given. And today, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, Jesus Christ, God our Father. We have the Father dwelling in us. At that day. When was the Holy Ghost officially given? Pentecost. Okay? Alright? Yes, it was. Can't deny that. Alright? As a permanent resident within the believer. See, the Holy Ghost under the law, under, uh, in other dispensations, could be in a believer. Absolutely. But see, the permanence, that seal until the day of redemption, which is the catching way of the body of Christ. The day of redemption. Okay? Uh, the day of uh, the redemption of the purchased possession, excuse me. We've been purchased by his blood, and we are sealed with the Lord himself. God the Father dwells in the believer. Okay? 
So at that day, ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. The Holy Ghost, the Lord, is that Spirit. Now have you seen? Okay, oh, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Oh, and, and uh, what, did, what did the Lord say? What did the Lord say in uh, John 15, verse 26? Interesting. John 14, 26. John 15, 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send on to you from the Father. Wait a minute. Look at John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. So wait a minute. The Father sends the Holy Ghost but Jesus says that he sends the Holy Ghost. Are you guys getting this? Is it, is it clicking? John 16. Okay, so wait. He says the Father will send the Holy Ghost. But then he says he'll send the Holy Ghost. I and my Father are one. Spirit, soul, and body, the Father in me. Jesus, he said, you, I, have I not been so long time with you and you have not known me? You, you see me, you, I'm, I'm the Father. Okay? Jesus is the Father. Okay? This, this ain't rocket science. Okay? This is very simple. The Trinity, which Catholicism even admits that it's there to confound you, but yet God is not the author of confusion. And in order to make one plus one plus one to equal one, you have to join, you have to be like a mathematician or something. No, simplicity. One plus one plus one is three. Okay, three persons, one God. Cuckoo, brrr, insanity. Okay, and when you have the Trinitarian. Well, I believe in Jesus, the Son of God. You're talking one of three persons. That's not who God is. You don't have the right God. John 16, this is 1 out of verse 14. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Dude, I've encountered Trinitarians when I've said to them, Jesus is the Father. If these guys, you should, you should see it. You should see it. They've been so ingrained by Satan and his church, Rome. They've been so ingrained, indoctrinated in this thing that if they had a shotgun, they'd shoot you. If you tell them the truth, that Jesus is the Father. Okay? And why do they act like that? These things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. They claim to know the Father, but the Father was right there, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Father. See, when you believe in three persons that make one God, and try to divide them up however these Trinitarians do, you don't know who the Father is. You don't know who Christ is. You don't know the Holy Ghost. Okay? You don't know. Why? Because it is one God. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not this God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. Find that. You know where they go to? To try to prove that? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You know where they go to? They go to Matthew. After the death, burial, resurrection. Amen. But they go to Matthew 28, verses 19 on the 20. And the Bibles messed this up, by the way. Let's read Matthew 28, 19 on the 20 very carefully. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, singular, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Don't look at me, look at the verse. 
the name of Zach. You, you know what? You, you, you take your little pen, okay? Underline that or circle it, or you take one of your gel things, mark that right there, okay? Singular name. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. How is he with you always? He is the Holy Ghost. Okay? That's where they go to. God the Father, God the Son. No, no, no. The name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. The name, one name, given among men under heaven, whereby we must be saved. <laughs> Right, let's continue in John 16. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. See, even here, they still didn't gravitate. They still didn't get the death, burial, and resurrection. They didn't. They were not looking forward to the cross. They didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection until it happened. The faith before the death, burial, and resurrection and the bloodshed on the cross was in him as king of the Jews in the context of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Christian? Okay? you got to rightly divide the word of truth, son. Let's continue. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Unless you're, a, unless you're a, an antinomianist, Oh, who say that the Holy Ghost, or read that idiot, Rene Roland, okay, where the um, the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin. Well, only, only an evil devil would say something like that. Okay, it doesn't convict you of sin. I'm writing this down for um, references in the description box. Only an evil devil would say, well, the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin. Video in the description box, okay? Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have many things, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Why? Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. God, Christ in you, the hope of glory, God the Father, you know, the Holy Ghost in you, who will guide you into all truth. Ye cannot bear them now, verse 12. Why? Because God is not a permanent resident yet in the believer until after the death, burial, and resurrection, and after when the Holy Ghost was officially given in Pentecost. Okay? Let's continue. He shall glorify me, because Jesus is the Father. For he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. When he appeared back unto the brethren before he ascended up into heaven. Okay? Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the, go to the Father. Right, right there, dude, more proof. They weren't looking forward to the cross. They were unaware of the death, burial, and resurrection until it happened. Don't fall for the lie that, well, they were looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden. No, they weren't. In the patriarchal period. No, they weren't. And under the law, no, they weren't. Okay? Then said he, therefore, 
What is this he saith a little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Jesus, now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him. And he said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, they sh that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. Ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Why? Because the Comforter will come. The Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, will dwell in you permanently if you go the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord. Call upon his name, and he saves you and seals you with himself. Brende? Now, Go to Jeremiah 23. This concept that, you know, when you are praying to the Lord, we as saints need to have a better grasp on just who we are actually talking to. I mean, we really do. And see, that's what the Trinitarian... See, the Trinitarian takes God and breaks him into three manageable little persons. Okay? No. No. God is one God. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. We are not little gods, but we are made in his image. Okay? Jeremiah 23, verses 21 on to verse 24. And this is key. And this is what so many Christians miss. How big is your God? Trinitarian, your God has been delegated to three persons. That's not who God is. Okay? You diminish God. You offend God. You insult God by calling him three persons. Okay? That's, that's, that's stupid. But see, like I said in the previous video, um, we have to have grace for Trinitarians because they have been trained... A Trinitarian? King James Bible even Christian who's a Trinitarian. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? You're more in line with Rome than you want to believe. It's disgusting how Rome has influenced people. You got King James Bible believing Christians who will divide the body of Christ over the birth of that man of sin, the son of perdition, I believe. Uh, you know, December 25th. You know, uh, yoking themselves up with Rome and uh, all things are lawful for me. I'll shut up. But you also have King James Bible even Christians, which is just another denomination now in Christianity, who are Trinitarians. You're, you're more in line with Rome than the December 25th worshipers. But you're all in line with Rome in one way or another. Again, Rome has everything wrong. But at its core thing, they have who got his right. Jeremiah 23, 21 on to 24. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. They want to be the star of the show. They want to be the star attraction. You see this a lot in a lot of these devils. You know, you do. They, they run to the front. They go, hey, look at me, look at me. So they can draw disciples away after themselves. Okay? I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, but they, yet they prophesy. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. Hear my words. Where are his words? The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Verse 23 and 24. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Is God just right there in front of you? Is he not also afar off? The Trinitarian busts down God into three manageable little, manageable little parts. But see, the enormity of who God is. We need we can't fully grasp ourselves, saints, the enormity of God. But 
what we can know is that God is spirit, soul, and body. One God. And his name is Jesus Christ. Okay, let's continue. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. Do I not fill heaven? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Does not God fill? Look at that verse. Look at the verse. Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? See, God's a lot bigger, a whole lot bigger than the Trinitarian, the Catholic, likes to break him down into and make him this little manageable thing as if they're playing with Play-Doh or something. I mean, the clay kind of toy for children. And immediately, brethren, remember this, whenever you read this, immediately you go to Psalm 139. Immediately, remember that, brother. Psalm 139, verses 1 on verse 12. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me, Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Is he a God at hand? Is he not also a God who is afar off? He fills heaven and earth. <coughs> Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Look at that. That's a lowercase s, one that is imparted. Whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art, he art, thou art there. He fills heaven and earth. Okay? If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Who's in control of hell? Not Lucifer. Yeah. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Right hand synonymous, the right hand of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. What does that mean? You're not going to hide from God. He fills heaven and earth. God the Father is in heaven, but God the Father is also in me and in you, saint. And who is the Father? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ in you. The hope of glory. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. If you have seen me, ye have seen the Father. Okay? Not three persons that make one God. That is insanity. And I applaud the Muslim who can easily, readily refute the Trinity. Okay? Now, Job 41. Job 41. Job for I like the book of Job. I like the book of Job. I understand why people nearing their end would gravitate to the book of Job. I understand. But in the book of Job, chapter 41... The Lord is making a veiled reference onto Satan. Now, we cover this in depth in the two-part uh, video about Job. Okay? All right? But, Leviathan. Leviathan, this is a reference onto Satan. Okay? Veiled reference onto Satan. This is also a fire-breathing dragon. Okay? And, you know, the thing about dinosaurs and whatnot... Well, well, dinosaurs weren't in the Bible. Well, you're right. Um, dinosaur is not in Scripture either. 
Dragon is. Dragon is. And if you read Job 41, fire comes out of his mouth, his kneesing, the light doth shine. Okay, he's talking about fire breathing dragon. And isn't, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Job 41, verses 1 on verse 12. Canest thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Remember, in the beginning of Job, Satan has to get permission from the Lord to afflict someone who belongs to the Lord. Remember that. Canst thou put an hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Like the accuser of the brethren, who Satan is, has to talk to, yay, skin for skin, yay. All that a man hath will he give for his life, but touch his bone and his flesh, and he'll curse thee to thy face. Will he, uh, will he make many supplications unto thee? This is a veiled reference unto Satan, people. Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? All this will I offer thee. If thou fall down and worship me, all will be thine, right? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? See, a lot of people also underestimate Satan. Okay? They do. And they think, you know, Satan who will give them the world, maybe. Okay? Shall, they, shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? I've cast out a few demons in the name of Jesus. Pentecostals. Yeah. I'm sure you have. In part it. Kenneth, uh, uh, shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part um, him among the merchants? Kenneth, thou fill his skin with barbed irons and his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand, lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. And we're at war right now, saints. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? The hope of him is in vain. Satan will never be saved. Satan cannot be redeemed. And there are those who have given themselves over to Satan who also cannot be redeemed. Not because, listen to me, not because the Lord can't save them. The Lord can save anybody. But he doesn't do it at gunpoint like the Calvinist wants you to believe. There is a point where someone will go past the point of no return. Where they can't go back. Not because the Lord can't. The Lord can save anybody. Anybody can be saved today. Amen. But he's not going to do it by coercion or force you. And there are those out there like this. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Hey, brother, you watching me? A lot of the people that you are consorting with are those that have gone past the point of no return and cannot return. They cannot because they have gone so far. Not that the Lord cannot save them, but that they themselves, of their own accord, have gone past the point and they think they are their own God. Okay? There is a line that a man, mankind, can cross where they will go so far that they cannot come back. Not that the Lord can't save them. The Lord, you hear that, you heretics? The Lord can save anybody and the impossible is possible with God. Amen, amen, amen. But the probability. <laughs> Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. And remember, Michael the archangel himself wouldn't dare bring a railing accusation against Satan. But what did he say? The Lord rebuke you. Who then is able to stand before me? Now, let that roll around in your head a little bit. You got these Pentecostals who think they're God. You, got, you also got the antinomianists who think they are God. Like it says in the Catechism, still, that man can become attain to Godhood. 
You Catholics, they don't, we don't teach, you don't even know your own catechism. God is the only one who can deal with Satan. Who's going to stand before God? I had these atheists. I got all these questions for God. Or it's like, you know, I remember Dave Murphy made some really incredulous remarks about my father. It's like, you're going to keep smoking it, Dave. You're going to have to pay for that. But, um, yeah. Look at that verse. None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Now see, some of these cutie pies will uh, look at verse 11. It's like, well, the Lord is prevented on certain things. Remember, we have free will. God, unlike what the Calvinist tells you, is not going to impose himself upon you. He's not going to force you to believe. He's not going to force you into salvation. Okay? The way you can, uh, if anything, uh, be against God is denying what he offers himself. But see, remember, God doesn't hold a gun at your head forcing you. Never forget that. Never forget that. Jeremiah 49. Jeremiah 49. See, the Trinitarian has not even the beginning concept of who God is. Okay? Even though Satan knows exactly who God is. It's, it's a bizarre little thing there. Jeremiah 49. 16 on to 22. Thy terribleness hath deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart. I am saved because I just believe. I belong to Christ's church. I am elect because of whatever. Or as I saw today, <laughs> Mr. Muscle Mike, that idiot, who dare had the statement, uh, people hate me because I'm smarter than everyone. <laughs> but you think you are, man. Anyway, more on that maybe a little later. But anyway. O oh, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill, though thou shouldest make thy nest as, uh, as high as the eagle, you're up on your high horse. You think you're special. You think you're all that. You save yourself by your own belief. You are your own God. Uh, you're better than the so-and-so. Yeah. Pride. And Lucifer was kicked out of heaven because I will be like the Most High and Leviathan is a king over all the children of pride? <laughs> Let's continue. I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Also Edom shall be a desolation. Every one that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord. No man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? Who is like me? Well, sinless perfection people think they're like God. The Catholic, they think they are like God. The Pentecostal, they think they are like God. The antinomianists, they think they are like God. Hmm. And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? What are we reading to? Here, um, 22. Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom, or Edom, and his purposes that he hath proposed against the inhabitants of Timon. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall, 
at the cry of the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. At the cry of the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle, and spread wing spread his wings over Bozrah. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pains. The pride of Christians. I'm saved because I'm elect. I'm saved because I go to Christ's church that he founded. Yeah. I'm saved because I just believe. Uh, uh, let me see, I didn't write that one down. John 4, we have to remember this. John 4, God fills heaven and earth, yet God dwells within the, the believer, the saint. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifests in the flesh. Son of David, King of the Jews. God's a lot bigger than the then we know, but we can know him. And God is a lot bigger than the Trinitarian makes him out to be. Because the Trinitarian tries to mold him into something that he is not. John 4, verses 19 on the 26. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our father is worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. That is why Rome has taken upon herself to be replacement theology. Because they tell you out without the Roman Catholic Church there is no salvation. So, replacement theology, salvation is of the Jews, and that means the Hebraic Jews, okay? That's why Rome is so anti-Israel, anti-Hebraic Jew. They are replacement theology. They teach you in the Catechism that there is no salvation outside of Rome, okay? But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit, lowercase s, and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. A spirit. You take out the A, God is spirit. Well, then any spirit you encounter could be God. How would you know the difference? Well, the Bibles take out the A, so you got to go to your Jesuit trained cemetery and priest or pastor in your phallus house to tell you the difference. We're right here. God is a spirit. Distinction. Capital S. And they that worship him must worship him in lowercase s spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, anointed one. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee, am he. Jesus never said, I am the Messiah. You're right. Uh, what he did say was, I that speak unto thee, am he. He affirmed that he is the Christ. Okay? Also, John 8. John 8, 54 on 59. 54 on 59 in John 8. John 8. Oh, excuse me, wrong place. John 8, 21 on the 30. We'll read that later. John 8, 21 on the 30. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, then said the Jews, Will he kill himself, because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come? And he saith unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. The doctrine according to godliness. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, 
ye shall die in your sins. See, Jesus didn't say he was God. He didn't have to. He said, I am. Jesus did not say he was the Messiah. He said, I who speak unto thee am he. You're right. He affirmed he was the Messiah. He affirmed that he was the Father. And right there, for if ye believe not that I am he, if you believe not that Jesus is the Father, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. Beginning. From the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And speak to the, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Verse 27. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. How could they? Because they didn't believe that he, that Jesus Christ is he. Okay? Now, John 10. 27 on to 33. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one in essence. No, I and my Father are one. Now he says the Father is greater than all. The body will perish. You can't kill my soul. See, that's why the Lord says, fear not them that hurt you. Like the Jesuits. They can kill your body, and they are experts at killing the body, at surgeries and all kinds of stuff, because they're all about flesh, because they are of Satan. But see, they can't kill your soul. They can't kill your spirit. They can kill the body. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? So when he says, my father is greater than I, he's referring on to the soul of the Godhead. Okay? That's what that means. Let's continue. I and my father are one. How did the Jews react to that? See, the Hebraic Jews understood what God said. And unfortunately, there are some Hebraic Jews that are Trinitarians. But the majority of the Hebraic Jews, the Messianic Jews that I have encountered, um, they're against the Trinity. See, the Hebraic Jews get this one right, for the most part. Like I said, there are some Messianic Jews who I have encountered who unfortunately were deceived by the Trinity. Okay? Unfortunately, but... For the most part, the Messianic Jews, they're like, no, three persons, that's crazy. But then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I shewed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, for good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Oh, 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 oh. And now we go to John 8. We'll go back to that. John 8, 54 under 59. See, the Jews got it. The Jews understood that Jesus was calling himself the Father. And they didn't want to believe him. John 8, 54 under 59. Jesus answered. Hey, hey, little muscle Mike with the bad teeth. If I honor, my, Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him. But I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. How did he see it? Maybe in a vision, but remember, where is Abraham? 
Then said they, then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, For Abraham was, I am. He didn't say, I am God. He didn't need to. He just called himself God. The Father. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus, him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. 1 John 5. 1 John 5. Okay? Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Well, Trinitarians believe that Jesus is the Christ, but see, they believe that of one of three persons. Not the true God. See, that deception, deceiving and being deceived. Trinitarians will say, well, I believe Jesus is the Son of, is the Son of God. But who is God? One God and three persons? No. Let's keep reading. And everyone that loveth him begat, and everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth also him that is begotten of him. Son of God, God manifest in the flesh. Son of man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Son of David, King of the Jews, King of kings, Lord of lords, okay? By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Born again. Okay? Born again. We talked about that at length. The link for that will be for you in the description box. Okay? For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God, God manifest in the flesh. Again, the Trinitarian. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You believe in one God and three persons. That is not who God is. You don't have the right God. So when you say that, you do not actually believe that Jesus is the Son of God because you're believing in the middle one of a three-person satanic trinity. You don't have the right God. <clears throat> this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the capital S Spirit that beareth witness because this Spirit is truth. Water and blood... Hold your place here before we read up in 7 and 8. Go to John 3. Water and blood. Now see, Catholics, Pentecostals, uh, uh, what's the uh, Robertson, um, Church of Christ guys, Lutherans, tell you that water baptism is necessary for salvation. No, it isn't. Okay? That will be in the description box for you as well. Okay? Baptism saves? No, it doesn't. Okay? What is this talking about? John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 8. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the excuse me, kingdom of God. That's reference unto the spiritual. Okay? Prove it to you. Absolutely. Keep reading. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Being born again. Cutie pies will say, well, being born again is only for the Jews. Paul never said born again. You're right. Paul did not mention born again. You're right. He just happened to define what it is to be born again. Same thing with Jesus never said, he, I am God. You're right. He didn't. He said, I am. He never said that he was the Messiah. You're right. He said, he that speaketh unto thee am he. Okay? Paul never said, born again. You're right. 
He just defined what it meant to be born again. Okay, watch out for it. And those guys are usually the antinomianists. Okay, usually. Let's continue. Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the capitalist spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay? Water breaks. Breaking of the water. Okay? Breaking of the water. When a woman bears a child, her water breaks. Okay? Animals can't be saved, by the way. Okay? Because there's water breaking involved with animals. Yes, there is. But see, an animal is a body and spirit. An animal, Fluffy, Xena, Fritz, Fido, Sarah, whatever your pet is called, they don't have a soul. Okay? All right? Mankind are the only ones that can be saved. All right? But verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, born, okay? And of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, like Christianity, like Antinomianism, Free Gracism, Catholic, Lutheran, Pentecostal, King James Bible believing Christianity, denominations of Christianity. Okay? And that which is born of the capitalist spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, plural, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the capitalist spirit. Go back to First John five, the Johannian comma, which the Bibles a majority of them take out, and this is describing the Godhead, not the Trinity. Why do you think the Bibles take them out, take this verse out, and call it the Johannian comma? If it was truly defining the Trinity, then why aren't they in the majority of the Bible? Why isn't it in the majority of the Bibles? Because it's not talking about the Trinity. It's talking about who God is. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Oh, excuse me, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father... The Word, capital W, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Father, the Soul, the Word made flesh, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, and these three are one. Spirit, Soul and body, one God. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The capitalist spirit, the water, being born, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And remember, the Lord was pierced in his side and water and blood came out. Okay? The fact that we were born born again and have the capitalist spirit dwelling within us and the blood is what cleanseth us from all sin if we are his witnesses you get it revelation 16 revelation 16 now for you catholics if you're a trinitarian you are a catholic Protestants of the Protestant Reformation, which the Lord used, yes he did. You know, they were Catholics that wanted to, they were protesting the abuses of Rome and wanted to reform Catholicism. Revelation 16, 12 and 13. Here's your trinity, Catholic. 
And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. The drying out of the river Euphrates happens during the time of Jacob's trouble. Happened, they were talking about something that happened a few years ago. <coughs> trying to tie it into this. No, that happens during the time of Jacob's trouble. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Spirits of frogs. Link that on to the uh, frog deity of Egypt. But, okay... The dragon, Revelation 12, 9 and 10. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He, a man, a person, was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. Bam! Bam! Someone who constantly accuses other people, that's all they do. Okay? All right? Now, now, okay, we see the dragon. Where are we? Uh, where was that? Uh, Revelation 16, verse 13. Okay? The dragon. The beast. Okay? The beast. John, uh, Revelation 13. 1 on the 3. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. That man of sin, the son of perdition who the Lord lets out in Revelation chapter 6. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon Satan gave him his power, and his seat and authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition. So you have the dragon, Satan, you have the beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition, two persons. And the mouth, and out of the mouth of Revelation 16, 13, out of the mouth of the false prophet. Revelation 13, 11 under 14. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake like a dragon, like Satan. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy to seeds. That's how a dragon speaks. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Look at verse 13. You know the Pentecostal Charismatics, Holy Ghost fire, talk about signs and wonder, and Holy Ghost fire, fire of the Holy Ghost. And doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And this is a mockery of what Elijah did, calling down fire from heaven to consume the captain and his fifties, and his fifty people. But keep in mind, the Pentecostals, Holy Ghost fire, and he does it in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of, to the beast, which had the wound by a deadly by a sword, and did live. Three persons. One God. And it's Satan. See, after we, the body of Christ, be redeemed, the redemption of the purchased possession before the time of Jacob's trouble, all these Catholics, all these free gracers, 
All these Calvinists are going to be left behind. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist, the Antichrist, find it for me, you won't, uh, they're going to be preaching, just believe and receive. Why? Why? See, that's what these people are setting you up for now. For when we, the body of Christ, be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to have these easy believers guys left behind, along with the Catholics and all these people, preaching you just believe and receive. And eternal security. And there is eternal security for the 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, what ends this period in history is when we, the body of Christ, be redeemed. Then begins the time of Jacob's trouble, which is by faith and works. Okay, faith and works. Uh, where is that? Where is that? Um, where, where he says... Um, uh, oh, one second. Got to find it. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. See, the free grace people are preparing you who get left behind for this time period to take the mark of the beast and to be damned and damned to hell by telling you it is by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble, and that eternal security is there. Eternal security is there for the 144,000 Jews. Anyone else that is not. It is faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. This is the danger of easy believism. This is why we as saints need to fight hard against it. And all the adherents thereof. Because they make people twofold more of a child of hell than themselves. And one last stop. Revelation 20, for your trinity. The trinity is Satan. The trinity is satanic. The trinity is not who God is. Revelation 20, 7 under 10. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Thousand years. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. People, when people talk to you today about Gog and Magog coming and black, uh, they, you don't have to worry about Gog and Magog for a long time. Okay, the redemption of the purchased possession happens. <coughs> the seven year period of the time of Jacob's trouble. The thousand year kingdom of heaven. Then Gog and Magog happens. Okay? Watch out for people who try to take from the book of Revelation and make them salvific doctrine for today and things that apply for today. They don't. Okay? There's instruction in righteousness, absolutely. But see, doctrinally, it's a different story. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Hell is eternal. Hell is eternal. Okay? Dear friend, dear friend, dear Christian, The authorized version of the scriptures does not teach you that one God consists of three persons. That is stupidity. Come here. The Trinity is a satanic doctrine that is comprised of Satan. 
the Trinity three person one God thing and Trinity does not appear in Scripture anyway. Okay? Godhead and Trinity are not the same thing. They are hardly the same thing. They are not the same God. The God who is our Father Jesus Christ is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. The God who isn't, Satan, the little G God of this world, one God in three persons. Dear Trinitarian, you do not have the right God. And you Trinitarians who are staunch to defend the Trinity, are you in trouble with the Lord? You are preaching another gospel, and you are definitely preaching another Jesus. If you do not have the right God, you might come close with the right gospel. But see, usually when they do that, they negate rightly dividing the word of truth. If you do not have the right God, how can you have the right gospel? Some get close to our Trinitarians, but there again, they say, oh, I believe in uh, the Son of God. They're talking about the second person and the three person satanic trinity. That is not who God is. Dear friend, I don't blame you. Rome, from her inception, Satan's church, has taught one God and three persons. Tell a lie often enough, loud enough, and um, um, whatever, um, people will believe it. That's what has happened with the Trinity. The Trinity is not of God, it is of Satan. There will be links for you in the description box to consider this. If you do not, you know, if you have the, if you believe in the Trinity, you don't have the right God. You need the actual Jesus Christ. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, please keep your servant in prayer. Please keep us in prayer. Um, my time's coming. And if I'm going to meet my end, I'm going to make sure, Lord willing, that it's going to be such an end. So, anyway, thank you, brethren, sisters. I love you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.